Here, they have one creature. So insidious. It just looks like pure blood. So dangerous. Is it that time in the show where I eat it? The food that makes some people sick and die? Will I make it to location two? Vietnam has over 2,000 miles of coastline. That means a lot of ocean access. Whoa! Ninja! Oceans that are packed with thousands of tasty marine species you've never seen before. Ah. All that area <laughs> is for the it's liver. It's dripping, dude! Okay, I'll put it away. <laughs> Today, we're on Phuoc Island in search of some seriously unique shellfish. Ooh. From a bizarre shelled species that bleeds real blood. It's small, but it is so weird. To the biggest clam you've ever seen. Wow. All that and more starting now. Welcome to Fuwok Island. This island is surrounded by water. Oh wait, that's all islands. We're back on Fuwok Island, Vietnam's biggest island and a destination for seafood lovers. Today we're in search of some of the world's most unique shellfish. Shellfish, boring, pale, bivalve mollusks. Wrong. Wrong. Here, they've got a shellfish that bleeds real red blood. Oh, and sticky. Do you like dining with a little bit of danger? I don't know if I'm gonna get sick, injured, or dead. For me, I just call it breakfast. Let's go. I've come to one of the biggest seafood restaurants in town with a varied menu you can literally pick from. Check this guy out, dude. That is freaking huge. It's got to be a few pounds at least. Super expensive, very exotic. But we're not here for this. We're actually here for something much, much smaller. Bye. This kind of edible aquarium is common among seafood restaurants in Vietnam. It keeps the food fresh and tantalizes the eyes of hungry patrons. Cool. So I made it to the clam section. What kind of clam is this? I guess that's a snail. We're not here for that. Here we have what I'd call uh, a normal ass clam. Nothing special. But here, this is actually what we've come for. It looks very innocent, indistinct, harmless, no big deal. But actually, it could be very dangerous. Oh wait, are you on my face right now? Very dangerous. These are known as blood clams. You'll see why soon. They're dangerous because they can easily carry deadly diseases like hepatitis, dysentery, and typhoid. Sounds delicious. Let's see. It's true that people have died from eating blood clams, but this is not a suicide mission. You see, the danger doesn't come from the clam itself, but from the environment they live in. Blood clams harvested from clean water or raised in farms are safe and loved throughout many parts of Asia. Right now, I'm in the kitchen with Chef Lee. Sir, nice to meet you. Put it there. Maybe they don't do handshakes on this island. It hasn't reached the island yet. A handshakes, that's okay. Here we have our blood clams. What's super unique about these is they're nearly impossible to open. So even though I want to eat it raw right now, or literally, can you open that? Huh? Basically, at this point, it's uneatable. You need a hammer and a chisel, or you need to steam it. Blanching the clams for half a minute makes their shells unhinge just enough to pry open. Oh, he's doing it. Yes! Look at that freaky little thing. It's small, but it is so weird. Oh, and sticky. And even in the shell, still, it just looks like pure blood. This gruesome red blood bath is the result of hemoglobin, the protein that gives our blood its red color. My God, that looks really gnarly. The blood clam is the only clam species carrying this protein. That's why it can easily pass on certain human blood diseases. Is it that time in the show where I eat it? The food that makes some people sick and die. Um, oh, and, and, uh, thanks, guy. And uh, this way we can both die. Cheers. Mmm, briny, a little sweet. It's got a funky, kind of half spongy, half crunchy texture. Okay, okay. I'm gonna take it as a yes. From here, he's gonna cook these up a couple more ways, and we're gonna try it out. Chef? After blanching, these clams are stir-fried with chili and garlic. Pour in some tamarind sauce and make sure each clam is coated in this sweet, sticky glaze. Want some more variety? These clams are coated with salt and chili. I'm gonna try one of these with the tamarind and the peanut inside. With my years in Vietnam, I know you're not supposed to go right for the meat. You're supposed to give this little washing machine action in your mouth. Clean. From here, I need to attempt to open this. Oh, the... Ah, this is like the world's hardest seafood to eat. I'm gonna bend my fingernails back, I know it. Ah, ah, there we go. At this point, 0% of that tamarind is actually on the meat. Give it a dip in the sauce. Try it out. 
beautiful balance. The tamarind is almost like a syrupy, sweet sauce. And so to balance out that kind of briny, oceanic flavor, you need a little bit of sweetness. Next, the spicy blood clam. This is a huge bite right here. Try it out. Ooh, so that one's very spicy, but a nice kind of inviting spiciness. This would be perfect with beer. Overall good. I like it, but I feel like I burned more calories trying to open it than I received by eating it. This mollusk mission is just beginning. This thing is so big, so old. I've never seen a clam this big. But before we get to that giant clam, we're stopping here a seafood spot containing a rare species that's quite possibly never been identified by scientists before. This is so weird. Let's try it out. We have come to our second location, a seafood restaurant with dozens of live seafood options. Here, something super unique that you don't see everywhere. Built into the wall, they have a compressor. From there, it's shooting out air through these little hoses. This hose has a little anchor. Drop that in, it puts oxygen into the water, and that way your seafood doesn't die until someone orders it. This before me is what we've come here for. This is the pen shell. The pen shell. It has a shell shaped somewhat like a quill pen, hence the name. Oh, it's so strong. There's no way to pry it open without just completely breaking the shell. It scared me because it moved. This pen shell species can easily be found in Vietnamese waters. Folks here can't get enough of what's inside this shell. I am in the kitchen right now with Chip. Day. You ready? Yeah. So he starts by sticking in a Subway butter knife and then he kind of peels one side and then opens it up. That's a confusing mess in there. Oh, I feel uncomfortable. I didn't realize it was so complicated. I thought it was just gonna be one big piece of meat. All right, well, you know, it's gotta eat, it's gotta poop. So all those components are in here. A stomach, probably an anus. We're not eating this one raw, are we? Oh, please God, no. These pen shells are made into two different dishes. Lucky for me, neither will be raw. First, the pen shell scallops are removed from the other organs, cut in half and stir fried. This is kind of like this scallop. One of these pen shells weighs about half a pound. And in that half a pound creature, you get this much luxury meat. Let's try it out. It's similar to a scallop. Maybe it's a scallop. It's not like a traditional, quickly seared, buttery scallop. It's gonna be just soft and sweet and super tender, soft. Did I say soft twice? This is very dense and quite chewy. Possibly cooked a little bit too long, but that just might be the way it rolls too. All the flavors are good, but man, that is an interesting texture. The second dish is simple. Cooking over hot charcoals with scallion oil and then peanuts. This is just everything. This white scallop is in here too, as well as everything else. I'm gonna try this out right now. A lot of stuff in there. I wouldn't say it's like the cleanest taste ever. It's got almost like an oceanic gaminess to it. Super chewy. It's like heavy and bold, like Vin Diesel, like ludicrous. What if I just named all the Fast and Furious cast? Who else is in Fast and Furious? Moving on, dish number three. We didn't actually come here for this, but I found it randomly. Ugh. What the? Yo, what's this? Oh, this is a gooey duck? No, I think it's different than a gooey duck. Gooey duck doesn't have any antennae. Me from the future now knows this is probably a Pacific racer clam. Dang, scientists were one step ahead of me once again. Ew. In order to catch these guys, folks need to wait for low tide, then dig through the mud with their hands. This is a specialty on this island, and honestly, I've never seen it anywhere else. This is great. Okay, let's eat that too. Grilling and stir frying are the most common ways to cook seafood here, and it's no different with this strange species. A hot pan, the clams, salt, oyster sauce, a bunch of morning glory, and that makes a pretty darn exclusive plate of yum. And I'm gonna try it out right now. That's a pleasant surprise. Although it looks super strange, the taste is pretty good. Just their seasonings here are fantastic. It's so garlicky, peppery. The creature itself, it's surprisingly soft and tender and easy to chew on. That is funky, man. Well, delicious. Coming up next, a record-breaking clam. It's eating your knife. It's the biggest one I've ever seen. There's like layers to this clam. And soon, the biggest I've ever eaten. Oh, I'm gonna regret this. We've come to a restaurant specializing in all types of insane seafood, but all of it is caught locally. Here, a lot of their seafood is really big. They specialize in big products, the biggest they can find. I saw something here that caught my eye. I'm gonna pull it out right now. I've never seen a clam this big. It's so big, it leaks about a liter of water when you take it out. Maybe it has to go to the bathroom. Is it going to the bathroom? 
on me? This is a pearl plant. Oh, it's so weird. It's like just like touching a rock or a coral. Yes, this ugly looking dude can actually make beautiful jewelry. On the show, there's some weird little coral growing. Like creatures were living on and in this creature. And soon, this creature is going to live inside of me. Because I'm going to eat it. Oh, I guess it'll be dead. Making pearls is usually done on pearl farms. But even a wild clam like this has a 1 in 1500 chance of bringing great food and great fortune. Chef Duan is going to pry it open right now and we're going to see what a giant clam looks like inside. No steaming, no boiling. This giant guy needs more of a physical approach. It's estimated this clam has been alive for roughly five years at least to get to this size. And by the time we open it, there won't be anything left. Wow. You hear that? Wow. The international language. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm going to regret this. Oh, what? This looks crazy inside. This is the huge meaty part. That would be kind of like a scallop. And then all the organs around it, as I'm feeling around, there is no oyster. You're usually not going to get lucky. Now that it's open, and now that I see I'm not one pearl richer, the rest is easy. The shell becomes a giant skillet. What part do you think is the most delicious? <laughs> so he's saying this really white meaty part. Ooh. Real good. Add scallion oil and peanut, the classic way to cook any shellfish here. Clams! Right here we're looking at a giant clam split in half. They use the clam as a dish itself to cook it in. It is both the cooking utensil and the food, all in one creature. The clam looks huge, it was very heavy. When you get down to it, it doesn't seem like a ton there. This is about four bites. Let's take a bite out of it. I've never had a multi-bite clam. That did not go that well. So the flavors are actually outstanding. Dynamite, a powerful scallion musk, some nice peanuts in there. But take a look, man. This is thick and chewy as heck. Like, I need a steak knife to eat the rest of this. Aha, I've spotted a solution. For some reason, Americans don't really use scissors in the kitchen, and they really ought to. Check it out. Oh, much better. Huh? Very nice. Now these pieces are much more manageable. Great seasoning. This is really quite a treat. And I was wrong. I thought it was four bites. It's like 40 bites and 4,000 chews to get it down. It's very chewy. Today, I've been living a seafood lover's dream, eating fresh food right from the tank. Oh, delicious. But it's actually possible to get even fresher than this. I'm talking food pulled right from the ocean. This is awesome. And moments later, it's on your plate. I thought fish would gather around like puppies do when you're eating. We've come to our third location. I'm with my dude, Mr. Wang. Wang? Wang. So let's do a quick tour. Right here, they have a bunch of cobia. This is just a huge white fish. From the top, they actually look a lot like sharks, but they are not sharks. Right now, we're gonna feed some. Oh, that's like me when my food comes at a restaurant. Typically, restaurants do their best to preserve fish in tanks with oxygen, but eventually most will die. We have a big group of groupers. Oh, please tell me a pack of groupers is called a group. Here, if you don't sell the fish for a week or even a couple months, it's not a problem. We're going to try to make them come to the surface. In fact, the fish can keep growing, bringing in more money when they finally sell. Oh, they're much more majestic. This place is not just about the fish. They also have clams stored in the same way. And he's going to pull some up right now. Take it away, sir. This is awesome. Look at this. I feel like a, a real fisherman, except someone else caught these. These clams are known as rambutan clams. The rambutan clam is the local name for the thorny oyster. Locals here say it looks a lot like this fruit. These spikes are part of the mollusk's defense system, and they help the clams to stick on other surfaces like reefs. He's going to shuck one of these open right now. Oh, what the flip? Maybe it's also called rambutan because it is bright and pink on the inside. He's gonna pull up one more bag right now. Oh, these are huge. These are called bull clams, and it's another indigenous species very near to Fuok Island. The bull clam also got this creative local name because it kind of looks like a bull. I don't know why I'm obsessed with trying to open these, <laughs> and I fail every time. This is the largest clam in the hard shell clam family. We're gonna have to throw this in hot boiling water. You'll like that, then you'll open up, huh? Grill them over charcoal for 20 minutes, top with cheese, and serve. Right now, perhaps the creepiest eating scene I've ever done. You guys hear that? Here, a beautiful spread of shellfish. On this side, it's the bowl clam. It looks like a cheeseburger without the bun. It's really solid. That's big. 
Oh, I almost choked to death. That is really hard to chew. I thought it was gonna be more like an oyster. It's nothing like an oyster. At one point, it almost killed me. Very dense, thick, a little sandy. That's how you know it's fresh. I feel conflicted. So this white trash side of me is like, ooh, processed melted cheese. So putting cheese on seafood, I don't wanna like it, but I kinda like it. Over here, the rambutan clam, it looks super interesting. The thorny oysters also get the hot water treatment. On the side, a hot pan with scallions and shallots. Add the clam meat, add some seasoning, then add some freshness. These clams look really freaky. It's almost like an eyeball. There's like a, this dark, deep, orangey red part, and then there's a opaque kind of white part, like a fish's eye that's clouded over. Let's try it out. Less chewy, more kind of spongy. The clams have kind of taken in some of that seasoning, but it still has its clammy brininess in there too. It's very different from any other clam I've had. It's like eating an eye. For me, it's been super fun throughout the whole day. Not just trying different kinds of shellfish I haven't seen before, but shellfish that you likely can't really get at other parts of the world. So when I say this is some of the most delicious seafood I've ever had, you basically have to take my word for it. And you'll have no idea if I'm lying because you can't travel here either because of Corona. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. We have come to our first location. Like location, location, location. Yeah, cut, cut, cut. Yeah, I, I didn't think it could get old. Just walking around eating food, it, it, it got old. I want something different. Or more money. Psych. I wasn't even on the phone. Fine, 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 fine. fine. Should we get rid of this kid too? Throw him away? Yeah. The tricky part about a spiny lobster is that uh, it's spiny. Son of a bitch. This is really hard to open. Maybe you can like bring it to the kitchen and the chef can open it and bring it back and pretend like I opened it. Oh, that one opened up really easily. I love this kitchen. No stainless steel. What they've done is they've taken kind of a plastic tarp and they've stapled it to a wooden table. That looks like metal from the side of a building. Real beach style. Real like, um, what's that show with Tom Hanks where he falls off the airplane? Outcast? Mission Impossible. Mission Impossible? It's like Mission Impossible. What the? That is it for this one. We will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Peace. And then, blah, what if I jumped in, huh? Would that be crazy? I'm not gonna. All right, let's go home. Can you move? Just watch. No, Careful. no, 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 no. <laughs>